I'm continuing on with my connector project and in the previous video I showed you how to take an existing set of features and store it as a user defined feature so that you can place it in a model multiple times and that's what I'm doing with the panel cutouts. Let's hop back over to the assembly and now I want to assemble some connectors into those locations and the connector I want to use it's going to be a D3899 and it's going to be for a wall mounted connector. And if you're taking a look at this geometry and you're amazed at what I created, hey, it wasn't me. I always like to give a shout out to the companies that make their CAD models available for free. Amphenol's UK site allows you to download these wonderful models to use so that you can have the geometry without having to spend a lot of time making it yourself really great service that they provide. So anyhow, whenever I assemble this component, I'm probably going to use the cylindrical surface for a coincident constraint, use the flat surface over here for a coincident constraint, maybe use this surface for parallel. And so rather than picking that geometry every single time that I want to assemble the component, I can define it here in the model. And you do that using what's called a component interface. To create a component interface, click on the icon, and the first thing, I'm going to give it a name. Rather than using the default name, I like to say exactly what this is going to be used for, and this is for a rear mounting of the connector. And then you're going to pick the geometry that you're going to use for your various constraints. And so I'll pick this cylindrical surface over here. It's going to use it for coincident. Let's click New Constraint. I'll pick this flat surface and it's going to use it for a coincident. And that surface could either be facing one of two different directions. And this explicit type allows you to select what essentially whether you're using the old mate or line constraints from Creo Paramet or excuse me, from Pro Engineer Wildfire 5.0 and earlier. And my last constraint, I'm going to use a parallel constraint with this surface. And so now I will click the check mark and we get a footer in the model tree. I, I can expand interfaces and you'll see that, oh, there's my rear mount. Looks like it did a misspelling. Let's edit definition quickly and select it and spell it correctly. There we go. I'll hit the check mark and again expand. I've got my interface called rear mount. Okay, now in addition to rear mounting, I can also use a front mounting of this. So let's click on component interface and let me rename this. I'm going to call this one front mount. Hit the enter key so it takes the value. And for my constraints, I'll use this surface for coincidence. And Next up, I'm going to rotate the model. Let's pick this back surface over here, and it's going to be coincident, also a mate constraint. And the third constraint, let's choose parallel and this surface again. Hit the check mark, and now I have my two different interfaces in the model. That's great. Let's hop over to the assembly and place it a few times. So, first off, let's do some rear mounting connect, uh, constraints. And so, I'll assemble it to this hole over here, actually this UDF. And let's click the Assemble button. And I know I've got it in session somewhere. There it is. And I'm just going to drop it here on the screen. And right now, hopefully you can see that it's highlighting the cylindrical surface. And I'll pick the corresponding cylindrical surface over here. By the way, in the model tree, or excuse me, the dashboard, you can see that saying rear mount. That's the component interface that I'm using. And lastly, for parallel, this surface up over here. And this actually gives me a rotation to it. Uh, you can go and change that. Oops. Maybe I'm being real particular. I want it to face this direction. Get the amphenol words facing upwards. All right, so that's good. And now if that's the only place of that I was going to put it, I could hit the check mark or middle mouse button to locate it. But what's really nice about using component interfaces is that you can right mouse click and hold and choose new location to place a component a second time. And so again, we'll do cylindrical surface, 
flat surface. And right now it's facing the wrong direction. That's okay, I can fix that in a moment. And so let's go to the placement tab. Here's location one, that's the first time I assembled it. Here's the coincident constraint, I can choose flip. And it's going in the correct direction. Let me scroll down in here. And it's actually giving me an angle offset. I can change that to parallel and flip that. There we go, now I have it facing the way that I want. So that way I've assembled that connector into my model twice. Let's hit the check mark and I'm going to assemble it one more time just to show you how you can use the other interface. All right, so I will click the assemble button and let me hit in session. I can't remember what folder I have it on my computer, but I know it's in my computer's RAM. Select the component, and I'm just gonna drop it on the screen about over here. And let's pick our cylindrical surface. And then, oh, you know what? Right now I'm using the rear mount. Let's change that from the dashboard. You can use the drop down list to change to front mount. And so let's pick the constraint for the cylindrical surface pick for the flat surface and pick for the parallel surface and that's good I like having it in the model that way I'm not going to assemble it any other time so you can hit the check mark on the dashboard or middle mouse button does the same thing so in that way I've used component interfaces to assemble this connector multiple times much quicker than if I was just picking constraints manually I hope you like this video. For more information, please visit www.creolwindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.